In this tutorial, we are going to create this urban section perspective combining Lumion and Photoshop. So let's get started. Okay guys, so first of all, I want to, um, as usual, remember you guys that you can get this full one hour video, the PSD file, and all the files and full length videos that we have worked with in our videos in the past in our Patreon page, right? So if you guys go to our Patreon page, you can get the whole Photoshop files, all the length, the real time videos, and you can uh, suggest new video ideas or any requests that you have. So let's start. So for this project, for this uh, image, I use a project that I had worked with uh, in my previous job, which was like a, a park, an urban park that was modeled in Revit, most of, it, most of it, and the context was done in City Engine, right? So uh, basically it's a very nice project and I want what I want to do is one, I want a sectioned perspective uh, from the top view. So what I'm going to do is I am going to first start by adjusting the camera. So that is our first step. So we are going to go to our camera uh, option in Lumion. I have Lumion 10, but this is the same for any version of Lumion that you have. And once you go to your camera option, you start uh, adjusting the camera that you want. We want a camera that uh, looks very nice in section and a camera that uh, has a very uh, centered point of view and it's mostly at eye, le at eye level, right? So that's the, the kind of things that you want to pay attention to. And the first and like the most important tool we're going to use in this tutorial is going to be the near clip plane. So I, I'm, I'm not sure when uh, this feature was installed in Lumion. I think it's from Lumion 9 on forward or in Lumion 8.5, I'm, I'm not sure. But basically what, what this feature does is just, it makes a clip plane, maybe maximum 10 meters ahead of the camera. So as you guys can see, I selected this clip plane effect from the effects panel and I put it to the maximum that it gave me, right? So it was 10 meters. As soon as we activated this effect, you guys can see that the, you can't see the, the foreground of the image but you can see like if it was cut, if there was, if it was like a more like a SketchUp section made. So that is what we wanted. So as soon as we have our camera adjusted and our clip plane in place, we are going to uh, adjust with other effects that we know our image is going to work with. In my case, I added some real skies, I added some, some fog, I added some volumetric sunlight, which, which gave it a lot of depth and I added some more effects that you guys are going to see on camera. It's not, it's nothing from another world. It's very simple and you guys can, you know, you know, look at it slowly, but it's really, they're very, very basic effects that are in Lumion. As soon as you guys have these effects ready and everything ready, you render your image and wait for it to render. I rendered it with my alpha channel and with my material ID channel. As soon as we have this, we are going to start to import it to Photoshop, right? So we're going to import our base image into Photoshop. Then we're going to import uh, our alpha channel and our render ID. For more, for best layer organization, you can group all, the, all these in a folder and whatever modification you do, you do it in another layer. So you don't do it on top of that same layer. And we're using a more of a non-destructive workflow, which was, which is what we want. And once the first thing that we have to do as soon as we import our image is to select the ground and group it all and color it all black or white. So why are we doing this? Because that's the like the most imperfect part of our of our section rendered in Lumion, which is that uh, it doesn't display very well <clears throat> the, like the ground and all the cuts it's making through the project. So what we're going to do is with, with, our, with our lasso tool, you can press L on your keyboard. You can start selecting the floor step by step 
And once you have all of this floor selected, you're going to create a new layer and you're going to paint this layer with your, with your paint bucket tool. You can press G on your keyboard and paint it black or paint it white. In the beginning, I painted it white, but uh, at the end, I will turn it black and in a moment, you guys will see why. So as soon as you have this painted, um, you want to start also correcting imperfections of the image. Personally, in the model, there was a lot of imperfections. So there were some uh, some elements of architecture that weren't uh, placed yet in the model. And there were some doors that needed to be corrected. So I just, with a clone tool, I just did this very quickly. It really depends on your image. If it's perfect, then you know, you don't have to do anything to it. But in my case, I really had to do some, some uh, corrections to it. Next, what we're going to do is because we want a more diagrammatic feel to the image, like a more like a mix between a, a render and a diagram plane section, something like that. We are going to add a stroke to the ground layer and a grid to the ground layer. So for those of you that don't know, you can stand right on top of your ground layer uh, and right click and where it says blending options, you can go and go to stroke, right? And we're going to add a stroke. I added a white stroke, but in the end, I was going to change it to, to a white stroke, but with a black background. And you can also go to pattern overlay and turn on the pattern overlay option. And we can select the grid. And once we have this, we can go back to our our, our main image. As you guys can see, I'm making some modifications because uh, the white doesn't work very well, so I turned it to black. You can just press Control U on your keyboard and turn everything to black by by lowering down the lightness. Again, you don't want a very true black, like a very deep, deep black, because you know it just sucks up all the colors. So what we want is we want a a not so dark black, right? So when we turn the lightness and lightness down, it's not down to the full. After we added that white stroke and the grid to our ground layer, we're going to start adding text and annotations. So for those of you that, that aren't following me on Instagram, I recently made a post on typographies or fonts we could use for our projects. And the, mo the, the one I recommend the most is Helvetica. Helvetica is maybe one of the most used uh, fonts in the world right now and it's it's because it's very simple it's very easy to read and it looks very very nice so that's the font I am using right now I think it's a free font I'm not sure uh, and you can just uh, use it I'm just using it for my annotation so I have a big title which is urban section and I have a series of small titles which are going to be explaining uh, you know the different uh, elements that are in the image different things that I want to be uh, to the, the story of the image to, to tell right and finally I had some uh, final touches to the image like for example uh, creating a stroke uh, around some some kids in, in the image and some trees that went with the annotations and I also painted uh, very softly with a white brush and 10% opacity uh, the background so because so it didn't distract as much so right so I just painted a, a little bit so we can uh, mix it with the sun and the sun sunlight that was coming in and our eye our eyes didn't go too much to the back side of the image and this was the final result of the image, right? So it's a, it was a very simple procedure, as you guys can see. It's nothing, you know, it's not neuroscience. It's not very difficult, but it's something that sometimes we don't use a lot, right? So sometimes, or we use just Photoshop, SketchUp and Photoshop, or we just use Lumion. But it would be like what I, what I recommend is trying to mix these two and experiment with these two programs. And you guys are going to see that once we start doing this, there, there are going to be a lot of possibilities in the future for many more images, right? So this is just one out of a thousand possibilities that we can do. We can also, you know, mid some axonometric diagrams from SketchUp with the 
uh, Lumion render style and then adjust it in Photoshop or you can uh, use the clip plane also to do some isometric clips, clips, etc, etc, etc. So there, there are a ton of possibilities that would be very interesting if we just mix up some programs. And yeah, I remember that you guys can see the whole one hour video with uh, my explanation of each tool in Photoshop. And you can also get the Photoshop file in my Patreon page. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video if you have any video recommendations type them in the comments below. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video.